everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I have a tag video for you, which I haven't done in quite a while, but uh, Shannon from Leaning Lights put this one out a little bit ago, and I was just finishing the associated TV show at the same time. I am doing The Office book tag. I watched The Office when it was still on air and then recently decided to re-watch all nine seasons because it's a great show. And then Shannon put out this tag and I was like, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. So it's 15 questions because there's a lot of really awesome characters on the show and I wasn't sure if I was gonna come up with an answer for all of them, but I pretty much managed to do so. So, so. The first uh, character is none other than Michael Scott, and the description for him, or the book, is book that tried way too hard, which is funny because that so describes Michael. <laughs> I had a little bit of trouble with this one, and I might get a few haters from it, but a book that I thought tried way too hard was Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer. Although the story sounded like it had a lot of promise, I just felt like it was so heavy-handed, and it was so too much trying too hard to be this like deep reflective story but involving a young child it just didn't fit for me i still ended up giving it a fairly good rating on goodreads but now thinking back on it it just was trying way too hard for me number two is dwight schrute gotta love dwight uh, his is a book that ended up being a lot more complex than you thought it would be. I chose a book that I actually reviewed earlier this year, but don't have in my possession at the moment, and that is The Almost Nearly Perfect People. It's a book about five countries, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Iceland. That book gave me way more than I thought I was going to get. I thought it would be pretty lighthearted and, oh, here's all the great things these countries do, but he went into not only the good stuff, but the bad stuff too, and made me realize that, okay, these countries may seem great from the outside, but they do have their own problems. Number three, Jim Halpert, it's you in a book, the book or character that you related to a ton. I really admire this character. I think she's awesome. I certainly don't see her as me. Like, I don't read the book and see me in her place. But that's Robin from the Cormoran Strike novels by Robert Galbraith slash J.K. Rowling. Robin is such a cool character. And although I certainly don't want her life, I love how she is written in the book. I don't want to be Jim Halpert, but I love Jim Halpert's character just like I love Robin's character. Number four is Pam Beasley, and this one is seriously underrated but amazing book you wish everyone would read. And the book I'm recommending for this one is The Lost Girls. It's another nonfiction book, and it's the story of these friends who quit their jobs and travel the world together. They kind of do what a lot of people dream of doing. They saved up, made a plan, and ended up traveling all around the world. And it talks about all of the things that they saw and did, and the sort of scary situations that they got themselves into, and how they were able to get themselves out. And it was just... Such a good book, it made me, I mean, I always want to travel, but it made me just want to do it so, so much more. And if you are someone who likes reading about travel, wants to travel, even just reading a fun nonfiction, this book is so good. I don't hear people talk about it enough. Number five is Ryan Howard, debut novel that uh, impressed you. Ryan looked great on the outside, but he was actually a horrible person. But this book is good on the outside and the inside. That book is Under the Egg by Laura Marks Fitzgerald. This w is a middle grade novel that I absolutely fell in love with. It was it was one of my favorite books in the year that I read it, and it was oh, it was so so good. So I was thoroughly impressed with this book. Number six, Angie Bernard, annoying book character that you can't help but love or not. And this one was actually pretty easy because I just spoke about her, Georgia Nicholson, from the Georgia Nicholson series by Louise Renison. I read the first five books. I have the last five sitting here on my shelf to continue reading. But Georgia is a teenager in England, and she is great, but also really annoying. You know, sometimes she makes me really, really frustrated, but at the same time, her character is confident and has so much fun, and, and yeah, she's just great. <laughs> Number seven is Robert California. Book or character or plot that went way over your head or was really confusing because who knows what the hell was going through Robert California's mind half the time. He was so weird. There have been a few books that I have read where I just, I don't know why I continued reading them. One of them was Going Bovine by Libba Bray and I love her Great and Terrible Beauty series. I really want to try reading The Diviners which is right here. Going Bovine was just 
the plot was too weird for me. I didn't know what was going on half the time. I barely remember the story now. I just remember it being really, really weird and me sort of wondering why I was even bothering to read the book. So yeah, whatever enjoyment I was supposed to get out of that, it went way over my head. Number eight, Angela Martin, a book with a plot that didn't appeal to you at first, but she ended up loving, which is really a great way to explain Angela because she does start off as this very hard, shrewd character who's a prude and you know all these other things and she definitely loosens up a bit at the end. She's not perfect but she loosens up, she becomes a better person and the book that I chose uh, for that is Anna and the French Kiss. I got this book because of all the hype and you know I'm not the biggest fan of contemporary YA. I read it every once in a while when I'm in the right mood but Anna and the French Kiss just really surprised me. I ended up getting very very invested in the relationship and have told other people to read it um, because I loved it so much. Nine, Kelly Kapoor, your favorite sassy character. Now, this character was, up until not that long ago, she only existed in the TV show, but now, as a revival, they have made a movie and also written a couple books with more to come, as far as I know, and that's Veronica Mars. So, I can officially put her on here because she's a book character now, because there are two different books that I actually have listened to on audiobook. Veronica is super sassy, really awesome. Once again, a confident character who can get shit done. Number 10, Kevin Malone, a book that features music. This one I had the most trouble with of all. I realized I haven't read really any books that feature music. I've read Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, but I didn't love that book as much as I thought I would. So I decided to go a little bit outside of the box and I put Julie Andrews's Home, a memoir of my early years. This is an autobiography obviously of her early years and talking about sort of her growth into fame and and honing her skills as a singer and you learn a lot about her life kind of slowly becoming more famous, slowly emerging into the spotlight uh, due to her singing abilities and so you know we're gonna relate that back to the music part of this question. It's a really great book to read. Number 11 is Phyllis Lappin. Now I have a love-hate relationship with Phyllis. Sometimes she's great and sometimes she's kind of a bitch but uh, a book that made you feel warm and fuzzy so we're going to pretend that Phyllis was never a, never a bad person. I didn't have a specific book for this one but rather a bunch of books by the author Jill Mansell. She writes really great romance stories but they're not harlequin romance stories. There are people you know, living their everyday lives in different places all over England. It seems that always seems to be her setting. I've read three of her books and she has a ton. But every time I read them, I just always feel very comforted. And they're really nice stories with lots of fun characters. And so they just, yeah, they make me feel warm and fuzzy. Number 12, Oscar Martinez, a book that has an awesome LGBT character that defies stereotypes. I decided to go with the first character that came to mind for me because when I read Will Grayson, Will Grayson quite a while ago now, it was I think the first time I'd read a book where I, there was an LGBT character who was like really recognized as being LGBT. And so Tiny Cooper, you know, he defies stereotypes because he's in high school, but he's loud and he's proud and uh, he's a football player, which is not usual. So that definitely defies stereotypes. And although he might not necessarily be awesome, he's very memorable and, you know, one of the first ones that I ever remember reading about. So I feel like he's worth mentioning. Number 13 is Stanley Hudson. And this one is a character or a book that did not give a fuck. So yeah, there's lots of swearing in this one. I apologize. Lots of swearing in this video. The answer for this one is going to be Flashman. Now, I feel like the majority of booktube will never have heard of Flashman, but he's, uh, there's a series of books written about this character who's made to appear as a real person and sort of happens to be in the right place at the right time for all these um, world events. Kind of like Forrest Gump with US history, but Flashman with like European, Middle Eastern history and a little bit in the US too. He gets himself into all this kind of trouble, but always manages to weasel his way out and he just and like he doesn't care so he gets himself into these crazy situations all all the time all the time number 14 Meredith Palmer a book you couldn't stomach because it was too graphic violent romantic vulgar or whatever your reason I have never put down a book because I thought it was too graphic or too vulgar uh, or even too romantic I have always plowed through and finished the book 
if I put down a book, it's not for those reasons specifically. So I decided to pick a book that is one of the most graphic books I have ever read, and that has to be The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Some of the scenes in this book, particularly at the beginning and towards the very end, if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. If you've read the book, you know what I mean. Those were pretty intense, and I read it a while ago, so, oh man, I was probably like 17 when I read the first one, I can't really remember. At that time, and even still today, it's probably the most graphic book or part of one of the more graphic series that I have ever read. Very nitty gritty and dark. And finally, number 15, Creed Bratton, a book or series that only ever made you ask more questions because that is a perfect way to describe Creed. The book I chose for this final question is Night Film. I read this book almost a year ago and it was very dark and atmospheric and there was so many things going on, so many little plot lines tying together and even though you did figure out some of the stuff, there was still so much mystery and every time something would happen it would lead to five more questions that may or may not have been answered in the rest of the book. So Night Film is where it's at. Okay, so 15 questions. I did it. <laughs> I am going to tag Leslie because she has also seen The Office, although she has not finished the series. So this is me encouraging Les to finish watching The Office and then do this tag. Anyone else who hasn't heard about this tag yet and really loves The Office, I encourage you to do it as well. As always, all of our links are in the doobly-doo. Check this out if you feel so inclined. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you later.